bang on this is it it is exactly one o'clock i said i'd start at one o'clock i do apologize for the slight delay in putting this video out or in creating this live i actually um i've had a little bit on the last few weeks but here we go this is a live so i want you guys to get involved ask questions make statements we're going to talk today about the use of drugs in sport here's heinrich Heinrich definitely has some opinions about drugs in sport. Hi Hattie, do you have any opinion about drugs in sport? I want to hear from you guys, this is a conversation, it's a two-way video, we're going to talk. Hey Rohan, good day mate, how are you? You'll definitely have something about drugs in sport to say, as will Biking Man Ultra. That's actually one of the areas that I'm going to focus on a little bit because we have been seeing a lot in the news recently about drugs in cycling bradley wiggins chris Froome. it's all over the place one of my favorite podcasts that i'm going to share with you is with a cyclist biking my ultra the french hat is not here because i'm not in france so that's why i don't have it on now thanks a lot to everyone who's joined the conversation i want to know first off what do you guys think about drugs in sport do you think there is drugs in sport do you know about drugs in sport and if you do know about it and you do think it's happening what are your thoughts good or not so good i guess if we really wind back a little bit one of the biggest busts we've seen in recent times is actually in cycling that's why it's quite good that the guys from biking man ultra have joined they're still yet to add any value to the conversation ah uh, you see he's joined i wonder what he thinks about drugs in sport but if you think about it a few years ago we saw the lance armstrong scandal it was absolutely huge lance armstrong seven times tour de france winner everyone thought he was clean or a lot of people thought he was clean and then it all came out he's on oprah it's a complete absolute almost two to three years i think the legal case is still going on for lance his sponsor get pulled the livestrong foundation fire him as the ceo although he's doing something quite good there and it's just a whole load of mayhem about Lance Armstrong. Talking about cycling, Heinrichs just popped in there. I personally believe Froome should just get the ban and take it all, all the other riders before him. That tested positive for the same thing before him. Yeah, we'll talk about Froome in a minute as well, Heinrich. Thanks for that, buddy. If you look at Lance, that was absolutely huge. Here's another cyclist that's just joined, Road Bike Dubai. He knows all about cycling. He might know a little bit about drugs in cycling as well, or he might have an opinion. Road Bike, what do you think about Lance Armstrong? So what do people generally think about the Lance Armstrong saga? He was a bad guy. He treated people badly, blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, what happened, he had a load of drug tests. Some of them he tested positive for. He then went on to admit that he was taking drugs. And then a load of people come out of the woodwork and either grass him up or support him that actually he was taking drugs. Therefore, is the system wrong or is the athlete wrong? And that's where I want to go pretty much straight away with this is the athletes, I believe anyone taking drugs, straight out I'll tell you, anyone taking drugs is wrong. I hate them. They're cheats and it's not right. However, these guys in the sports are playing the system. And I believe in all sports, and that's pretty much every single sport where there's money involved, people are playing the system and they're pushing the boundaries as far as they can. O-Train says he thinks there is drugs in sport but still think you have to be a top athlete. And that's one of the things that came out of the Lance Armstrong saga. If you look when he was stripped of those seven titles from the Tour de France, they tried to give them to people. And they went down the list, and down the list, and down the list. And there was actually a chart that those guys released, or that someone in cycling released, about who should get the Tour de France titles. And they got to about 10 people down the list, and then they said, we can't really give it to anyone. So if you look who is the, the title holder of the Tour de France, in those years that Lance got stripped of the title, they haven't really been able to give it to anyone. Hattie says the athlete, because if none of them did it, there wouldn't be any reason to criticize the system. I agree with you there. However, when there's a lot of money influencing in sport, this is these guys' livelihoods, especially in some lower down sports where in the lower echelons, people are not getting paid a lot of money. There's a lot of money to be made at the top end, and that maybe tempts people to cheat. Heinrich says even though he used drugs, he still put work in. I guess we're talking about Lance Armstrong here. Athletes shouldn't take it. Off 
to start off with and just do the work, level the playing field. I would love, love Dwayne Mack. Keep your pants on, I'm not taking my shirt off. Your daughter's just joined. I used to coach her since she was very young. She wouldn't like me without my shirt on. I think you're right, Heinrich. I think if it was a level playing field, it'd be absolutely awesome. One thing I think you've got to think about though, guys, is what makes sports attractive to the audiences. At the end of the day, it sponsors and audiences that pay, thanks Alani, I'll definitely keep it on. It sports audiences that pay the salaries of all the sports people, right or wrong. That's where the money's coming from. People, Ali, I agree with you, all top athletes use drugs. That's the first thing we've agreed on. I love you, bro. So what's happening is we want to see people go faster. We want to see people break records. We want to see people do stuff that's a lot better than what we've seen before. That's what grabs an audience. That's from a marketing perspective, what's attractive to people is that the sport is somehow wow. If you look at CrossFit, you want to see people lift more than they've lifted before. If you look at athletics, you want to see people go faster than they've gone before. In cycling, we want to see people crush people on big climbs. And it's incredible. A, a super famous, just YouTube it, Lance Armstrong killing Jan Ulrich on a climb in the Tour de France. He rides away from him like it's nothing. And the crowd have just gone, wow, this is just absolutely incredible. We'll just pause there. There's definitely a huge way you have drug abuse, especially in the bodybuilding community. I just feel very pissed that those athletes were given advice to us natural athletes and saw poor results. I agree with you there, mate, as well. I think people need to be honest about taking drugs and about giving advice. If you are taking drugs, maybe not give advice to someone that you don't want to. Ali says in tennis, you want to see winning grand slams at the age of 36. It brings more spectators and this is more money. And that is exactly what I was saying, mate. People would love, look at one of the famous, one of the big stars of tennis. You've mentioned there, Ali. Federer, if you take someone like Agassi, how good would it be for so many different brands on so many different levels if Agassi got to a level of form and could go to Wimbledon this year with a legitimate chance of winning? It would be sell out every single day. Sponsors would cash in, people would be paying money, they'd buy replica t-shirts and they'd support it until the clouds come home. Agassi could potentially do that if he took illegal drugs. So there we go, that's something to think about. So a lot of it, these sports have to get better to stay interesting. Hadi says we want to see people breaking records but on their own merit. I agree with you 200%. I want to see legitimate people breaking records. I don't want to see people on drugs do it. And this is why I wanted to do this show because I think a lot of people think that sportsmen at the top level and women are not taking drugs. I don't want to say that everyone is but I want to say that a lot more people than we actually think or want to believe are taking drugs are actually taking drugs. Have a listen to this one podcast. It's a very old one. Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan Show, one of the biggest podcasts in the world. Absolutely awesome. Go check him out and just put into his website or into iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast from. He did an interview with Victor Conte. I listened to it about three or four years ago. It's one of Joe Rogan's standard podcasts. It's about three or four hours long. Victor Conte went to jail for drugging people legally and he tells you exactly how it all works. Let's just break that thought. How will anyone ever break a record again that stands on the back of drug use? I agree with you 100% Heinrich. If records have been set by people taking drugs, there's not really much chance. And if the sports want to continue to grow and also continue to have an audience, have money, have marketing, We'll come to what I think about sports governing bodies in a minute. You're absolutely right. My thoughts on Lance Armstrong there, Mr. C.H. Hamilton. The guy cheated. It's obvious. He said he did. However, he cheated better than everyone else. Does it make it right? Absolutely not. Was he a better athlete? Maybe, maybe not. Did he have better drugs than everyone else? Absolutely. Yes, he did. So what I was saying there, go and check out Victor Conte on the Joe Rogan podcast. And this is where I want to jump into actually what the federations are doing and how the federations are protecting and asking athletes to perform at optimal levels. And sometimes, in Victor Conte's case, he was contacted by the American Athletics Federation and it was his order, his job, to make sure America got more medals at the next Olympics in that particular period. And they said to him, you can drug the athletes. The athletes wanted to be drugged, and he drugged them. Hold that thought. Dwayne Max says, professional clubs and athletes 
have deeper pockets than regulators and therefore masking agents can be developed quicker than drug testers can keep up with. Absolutely agree. Hello, Steve Parker. Hope you've recovered from this morning. You nearly smashed me on the first one mile. I had to dig deep. Thanks for pushing me, mate. I agree with Dwayne and let's jump into that. Let's jump into the federations. If you think about it, cycling's gone through a really tough time and cycling's an easy target because it seems to be always in the news at the moment. Lance Armstrong, super famous. All the guys that got busted, super famous in the British media at the moment. We've got Froome on charges. We've got Wiggins on charges. Not really sure which way either is gonna go. We know that Heinrich wants Froome to go. Yeah, I did it, take a ban, come back in a couple of years. Maybe drugs have changed and he's got more and better drugs. If you think about it from a sports perspective, like Dwayne says, the pockets of the sports federations are always gonna be deeper and they're gonna invest a lot more in protecting their own sport than what the anti-doping agencies can do. Now, I'm not saying that the Cycling Federation is paying WADA or USADA much. What I am saying is that you've got to think about it. Think about football. What would happen to the English Premier League if the English Premier League did a whole study and a whole investigation into whether or not their players were taking drugs? You think about cycling. Tour de France is a brutal sport, a brutal event in cycling. Cycling's a brutal sport. Three week event, it's absolute mayhem. Hello Ahmed, well done in the workout this morning, buddy. Now, football is equally as brutal. The season has got longer and longer. Why? So they can sell more tickets to more games, more merchandise, and more TV rights. The season starts somewhere in August and finishes almost at the end of May, I think now. The season used to start mid to late September, obviously after summer, it's a winter sport football, and finish at the end of March, early April, when I was a lad. Things have changed a little bit. So these players are now playing sometimes three, four games a week in certain cases. That's quite extreme, but they can play often. If they're playing in Europe and they're playing in the Premiership, they're having two games a week minimum. You look at some of the old stats that came out when Beckham was the gun. I just remember seeing his stats. He'd run 20, 25K as a midfielder in a game. That's pretty brutal. Are there drugs in football? In my opinion, there may just be. But will the FA make an investigation into it and expose the fact that these players are taking either performance enhancing drugs, and we'll come to two different types of drugs. The second one is a more recreational drug. Some people and athletes, even as far back as Simpson in the Tour de France in 1967, Jack LaRue has just joined. He knows a lot about cycling. He remember when Simpson died. Well, actually Jack might have been alive in 67 when uh, Simpson died. It's quite old. No, he wasn't quite alive there, but he will be soon. <laughs> 1967, Simpson died climbing Mont Ventoux, great mountain, brutal climb just almost at the top. When they checked his body, it was full of amphetamines and alcohol. And basically, he'd killed himself. What he had on him was a whole load more drugs. So there's actually been drugs in sport forever. He was using more recreational drugs. Back then in the Tour de France, these guys would stop on the side of the road, have a drink of alcohol, numb the pain a little bit, and keep on going up, up the mountain. So there are more recreational drugs. We've also seen a lot of busts in football for recreational drugs. Whether those guys are generally using, the more common ones are things like cocaine, whether they're using them on the weekend. Here's Vitor, he knows something about cycling. I'm interested to get your thoughts on drugs in sport. Vitor, say something, type something. English, not Portuguese. Here comes Hattie. The reason the Premier League does nothing about drugs in football because the players are loved by people and if the Premier League accused them of drugs, people would hate them more than the players. Absolutely agree with you. It goes back to my point before how all of this is just completely commercial. Look at footballers. We've had a lot of busts over nothing. Vitor doesn't have anything to say about drugs in sport. That's good. Just take some painkillers. Ibuprofen, Voltaren makes it all cool. Hello, Marvin B. Shah. You were probably alive when Simpson died on Mont Ventoux. He died in 67. Yes, you'll definitely have been alive. You might have remembered that. That was all recreational drugs. Technology's advanced. And this is one of the things as well. Dwayne just made a comment about that before. What's happening now 
is the federations, we think, and this is only my opinion, we think the federations are investing money in masking the drugs or in programs so, so complex that the drugs are not showing in the riders' bodies or in the athletes' bodies as a whole. And that's one of the things with performance enhancing drugs. For sure, in a, in a race like the Tour de France that goes on for a long time, there is benefit in having drugs in your body during that whole time. For a lot of athletes, for track athletes, and this is why out of season testing has become a lot more popular and is absolutely essential to bring down the amount of use in drugs, is out of competition and out of season testing. That's when the gains are made from illegal drugs. O-Train says, is drug testing a waste like Floyd Land Floyd Landis suggested in the podcast? That's another podcast I want to send you to, the James Altucher Show, which he interviewed Sorry, Hattie says it's just sad because the real athletes don't stand a chance. Absolutely, absolutely agree. I think it's very sad. I'm going to talk about this. We're going to talk for another 15 minutes about it. I hate drug use in sport. I'll say it, I'll say it again. I hate it. Drug testing, Floyd Landis was interviewed by a guy called James Altucher. The James Altucher Show. It's a super awesome show. Floyd Landis ironically now runs a marijuana business in America, a legal marijuana business in America. And he was one of the big, what they call whistleblowers for the Lance Armstrong scenario. He said that it's actually a little bit of a waste of time because they just can't catch these guys. And that's one school of thought that, well, make anything legal, make everything legal or have no rules around drug testing in sport. And then let's see who's the best athlete. Let's see what happens. Gay says 70.3 at sub 4 and 140 at sub 8. Not sure what that's got to do with anything, Gay, but hey, Luke's here. Luke's definitely got some thoughts about drugs in sport. When you think about that, when you think about what people are saying, Dwayne says it's because they're on bikes. Not sure what that is. Um, when you think about what people are saying about, yeah, drop the rules, it's actually quite interesting because if you look at some sports, there is a lot of regulation around the equipment that you can use. That equipment, however, is getting pushed further. The boundaries are getting pushed further. Technology is coming in further. Again, especially in cycling, the technology of bicycles is changing a lot. So people are allowed to use technology and there really is no limit. The UCI is now coming in and limiting what they can do. Frames this way, before this one disappears, is drug use just a way to fool our bodies? Miss that one, can you put it there? Marvin says at 67, regular gym car. It's absolutely amazing what jobs, drugs, are ingest, injected in recreational gym activity, therefore cannot be surprised that professional sportsmen bend the rules. Kaboom! I agree with you 100%. And this goes down to a lot about people's motivation and wanting to get a shortcut. You can come into my gym, you can train super hard, you can eat well, you can sleep well, and you can be have, maintain a really good lifestyle. It will take you some time, it depends what your start point is, to get in good shape. If you're in bad shape, it's gonna take longer, obviously. Or you can go and take drugs and it'll happen really quick. And in a world of immediate gratification, unfortunately, as Marvin said there, a lot of the time, people are even using drugs for recreational. They don't have, there isn't a big prize fund. There isn't a big sponsor deal out there, which is super, super sad. Uh, who's saying says, is drug use just a way to fool our bodies into less recovery time? A lot of drugs, that people are using are actually to reduce recovery, to help the body go again. Uh, Jack says, maybe you covered it earlier, but caffeine can enhance performance. It is not also a drug then. Absolutely agree with you, Jack. I'll come back to the recovery thing in a second. Jack says, caffeine's a drug. There's loads of legal things out there. I think that as long as it's legal, actually it's not too bad. It's okay. There is in certain sports, caffeine limits. In CrossFit a couple of years ago in their drug policy, it mentioned the amount of caffeine you're allowed to have in your body. So that covers that one off. Who's saying, and if so, shouldn't we focus more on advice about recovery rather than hammering it all the time? I agree with you. As I was saying, a lot of drugs actually speed up the recovery process so we can train hard again. And that's something that's super important to understand. All of these drugs work in a different way depending on what you're taking. Some people are taking drugs to let their body speed up again, so uh, recover faster so they can go again and they can speed up their performance that way. We need to recover better, but recovery takes time. 
And time means that some people might have to sit out a football match, they might have to miss a bike race or miss an athletics meet. And that happens with some athletes. What happens when they miss that though, is that they miss their payday. So where's the motivation? The motivation, perhaps, is taking drugs to recover faster so they can go for payday again. That's an interesting one. Steve Parker says, they introduced therapeutic use exemptions to try and support athletes with illness who need medicine, yet it feels like it has created a loophole that people are abusing. Absolutely agree. So the bottom line, what Steve's saying here is, if you get a note from a doctor that's somehow legit, which I'm actually not sure if any of them are. You get a note from a doctor saying in Froome's case, I think it was an inhaler, saying that he needs an inhaler. He's always had asthma. So he's allowed, similar to what I was saying there about the caffeine, he's allowed a certain amount of asthma ventolin in his body. When Froome was tested, he had more than was mentioned in his exemption. Go figure. I agree exactly what, with what you're saying there, Steve. Especially there's certain drugs, when I was playing rugby and we were getting tested, there's certain painkillers that we're not allowed to have. There's certain nasal sprays that we're not allowed to have because of what properties they have in it. But that's up to the sport and that's up to the athlete to know. If you can't live without it, then is that really your sport? It's kind of an interesting one. Gates says, sorry for not clarifying markers. For athletes that break records or the new athletes that show up and suddenly break world records, especially for a full Ironman. Yep, I agree with you, mate. It's the same. Endurance sport is littered with it. All sports are littered with it. And you get someone that turns up and suddenly they're an absolute hero or suddenly they're super fast. Marvin says, in reality, the focus needs to be on youth who easily get sucked in. Governments show graphically the effect of tobacco. Why not the same for steroids, which calcify the internal organs? That's actually a super, super, good way to do it. The thing about it though, what I'd say again, is that the money that someone's gonna pump into that compared to the money that the sport governing bodies are making from these athletes performing at top level and creating this big audience is never gonna be comparable. So they're gonna campaign and campaign the governments and they're gonna be like, woo, Icarus. That's something to see. We'll come to that in a second. Back to what Floyd Landis said, O-Train says, are sports men and women held in into higher class of people. I'm not sure I get what you mean there, mate. Steve Parker says, so it goes back to your payday point. Take the drug to get better, but there must be a period when you can compete until additional value of drug. Performance has left your body. I'm not quite sure I get that, but yes. Henrik has, he has to use a therapeutic use exemption whilst I was racing for my inhaler. But medicine has evolved so much that I can get an inhaler with zero illegal substance in it. Why don't the pros do the same? <laughs> Bang! Froom! Right in your face from Heinrich. He has the same situation as you. He has an inhaler without the drug in that you were using. Yeah, of course, Chris Froom's listening to this, isn't he? Yeah, that's something that, uh, that's definitely super interesting as well. I'm not sure what, what you mean there, Stevie. Say that one again, or we'll read it again so it goes back to your payday point take the drug to get better, but there must be a period when you can't compete until additional value of drug re-performance has left your body. That's happening though, mate. That, some people are taking, I think you're talking about out of season, um, out of season drugs and out of season drug use where there's not testing. That's why I fully support 365 days a year. Jason, I think has got a great point here. Still incredible Ironman times haven't come down since its inception makes you think something was up in the early days. Equipment and training systems has been developed so much, but time not come down. Absolutely agree with you there, Jason. And also Chris Boardman did a test for the hour on the same bike or something similar a couple of years ago, which has made me think exactly the same. The times haven't come down. When you compare the times when these guys are on the same machinery, they're not that much different. The difference which I think is what Jason is saying, is maybe the drugs. So, I mean, that's really where it comes from. My gut feeling, and I wanna share my honest opinion, is that the governing bodies are not doing a great deal. They know that there's a problem. However, sport is commercial, it's a business, and it keeps on going and going. Sports governing bodies do not wanna come out and say, yes, our sport is full of drugs. The media are doing a great job of telling cycling that their sport is full of drugs. 
the media are not doing a great job of telling football that football is full of drugs. Is it though? I want to know what your thoughts, like a lot of you guys like Premiership football, Ben Davies, you love Premiership football. Also talk about rugby, a sport I used to play. I never really saw that much use of drugs. I saw people who were ranked amateurs using steroids to get bigger, to build up their, to build up their muscle, to get bigger and stronger for rugby. I'm not sure how it's changed since I retired, shit, 10 years ago. I'm so old now. Marvin says the greatest Olympian Redgrave openly opened up to drug testing. I don't, was Red, did Redgrave test positive? Redgrave actually had diabetes and was fighting all sorts of stuff. Um, maybe he had therapeutic use exemptions as well back in the day. Steve Parker, sorry, still broken after chasing a therapy. I mean, if you're ill, you can take a drug to get better, but you can't compete until it's out of your system. So it's time and the volume. I absolutely agree with you, mate. I think if you're crook, if you have a natural problem, then maybe you need to do something different. You know, we teach physical fitness here. I'm a little bit in trouble at the moment with my shoulder. However, if I couldn't demonstrate the movement to you, then you probably wouldn't have much respect for me as a coach. It's the same in sport. If your body is unable to compete in your sport without using drugs, without having this therapeutic use exemption from your doctor, then is that really the right sport for you? I'm not really sure what's going to happen over the next few months. As we saw there before, Heinrich was saying that he thinks Froome should just put his hand up and say, yep, yeah, I'm guilty, take the ban. Again, that wouldn't be very commercial because wasn't it a few weeks before Froome's news came out that Team Sky said, this year our, main, our only focus is on Froome winning the Giro and the Tour de France. Heinrich's come back. South African rugby players get a slap on the wrist for drug busts in comparison to any other sports in our country. Definitely huge use of drugs in rugby. Heinrich's in South Africa. What's the national sport of South Africa? I think for commercial value and following, I would imagine that rugby is bigger than cricket. So do they want their athletes to be busted for drugs and for all of that commercial side of the business to go down? I doubt it. And that's why, as Heinrich's saying, there's a big use of drugs in South Africa, in South African rugby, and no one does anything about it. Heinrich's also saying, ah, maybe that's the, um, Heinrich, maybe that's the popularity of sports in South Africa, rugby, cricket, and soccer. I, as I say, I played rugby for a long time. I was never, I never saw any real use. I heard of guys using drugs in the off season to bulk up and get bigger. Is that right? No. Uh, Stuart Black says, and schoolboys in South Africa. Again, those schoolboys are not going to get a chance unless they're at the optimal level. And now, unfortunately, perhaps Black will tell us that those drugs is the only thing that they feel is gonna take them to the optimal level. And that analogy I gave you before, you come into my gym a few weeks, a few kilos overweight, we can get that off in a few weeks or a couple of months. If you go somewhere else and use a banned substance, that could happen literally within a few weeks. You'd still have to fix a couple of things up, but the use of steroids speeds all of this stuff up. It is a contentious issue when we're talking about medication but definitely as Steve Parker says there, if you're sick and you need the medication, then stay out of your sport. Relax from it. You're sick. It's not working. Take your medication, get it out of your system, and then go back into sport. But I think that's probably a little bit of an ideal. Steve says, you're never too old. Come and join Ben Davies and I at next year's Sevens Old Man. I don't think I'll be playing any rugby. Mate, if I hadn't have had this accident, I definitely would have come and played. Uh, I don't think I'll be playing too much rugby. We're nearly there, ready to wrap this up, guys. They're my thoughts. There's a few resources I think you should check out. You should definitely check out Victor Conte on Joe Rogan's podcast. Really interesting insights into what he got paid money to do. He was paid money to drug people, in short, to drug people to win Olympic gold medals for the Americans. Marion Jones is someone he speaks openly about. So that's one thing you should check out. You should also check out Icarus, the new documentary of the Russian drugs scandal. You should go and check that out. That's very interesting. And we know the Russian scandal from the last Olympics. One more comment there, recreational drugs in the main Aussie top sports is massive and some of the biggest stars are all on it, which is disappointing. Yeah, some of the big stars are taking it. 
but they're the big stars that are bringing the big crowds. And a final resource or something that I just, I actually put it on my story a few weeks ago, that I think if you're interested in drugs in sport or this topic as a whole, you should definitely go and check it out, is a podcast with the James Altucher, the James Altucher Show, when he interviewed Floyd Landis. As I said earlier, Floyd Landis now owns a therapeutic use marijuana business, but he's pretty straight talking and his opinion is not much different from mine. Most sports, all sports, pretty much every sport. I, I wonder actually, I mean, if you look at something like darts, I wonder like what sort of drug you can take to improve mental focus or to improve that. Most of these guys you see in darts actually are just, just drinking. So yeah, Heinrich, definitely go and watch Icarus. It's super good. For the record, Dwayne Max says, despite all chatter, I've never taken roids. Yeah, that's surprising because you're pretty jacked, mate. Like, yeah, that's that, that's very cool. But I wonder in um, I wonder in darts and things like that, or in snooker. So I won't say every single. There we go. Heinrich says, Heinrich, you know quite a lot about sports and you're a uh, drugs and sport and you're a cyclist. Ritalin is a focus enhancer. So if you want to get better at your work, one thing we didn't touch on, and we talk a lot about drugs in sports, and maybe this is a great way to close and maybe we'll do another live about this topic later. <laughs> like he says, 180 grams of RIT sorts you out real good. There is a lot of drugs in sport, I believe. And we've talked about it in here and you guys seem to think there is. Did Viagra help Tiger Woods? <laughs> Probably not O-Train, but that's a good thing. Why are we not talking about testing the leaders of the world? CEOs, business owners, people that are making decisions about the future. Has anyone drug tested Donald Trump recently? That's a nice way to finish, isn't it? Have a think about that. Donald Trump drug test, performance enhancing, Ritalin that these guys are talking about, or maybe just recreational. Some of the stuff he says and does, I'm sure he must have a cocktail of the lot. But seriously, some of these world leaders and some of the big businessmen are making decisions that actually can impact the lives of so many more people than a sportsman taking drugs to win in their sport. So shouldn't they be tested as well? There we go. That was a decent one. Thanks a lot for everyone who's jumped in on the show, for everyone who has got some opinion and got some feedback. Please send me some comments. I'd love to hear. I'll be posting this video over on YouTube and on Facebook. So if someone has missed it or has just joined here at the end or has seen bits of it, just hit me up, send me a direct message and I will send you the link to the video. Thanks a lot everyone for tuning in. I'll catch you next week with another topic. What do you want it to be? Let me know.